What's up, YouTube? Jay Barraby here. I'm going to give you the 11 strategies that I used last year to sell 86 homes and how you can implement those into your business to level up right now. If you guys don't know me, I'm Jay Barraby. I'm a realtor, property manager, and real estate trainer coach. And my primary focus is on giving you, the agent, the tools, the trainings to level up your real estate game and to help you sell more homes. So you can have more time, more freedom to do all the good stuff in life that you love. And that's what it's all about. So today's video, it's all about using scripts, using the right words, but not just what to say, when to say, how to say, what to say, why to say the words that you're saying that is going to cause the seller to want to just list the home with you. And this is what happens. This is what happens when you use the right stuff, okay? So you're going to get those 11 strategies. Uh, you're also going to know what not to say and so much more. So let's get right into it. Boom. Okay, so strategy number one. First one, upswings and downswings. And let me kind of give you a little background of why I'm even doing this video in particular and how this helped me sell 86 homes last year and really was the catapult to changing my business years ago uh, when my wife and I really just pivoted into uh, more of a direct sales approach. So anyway, um, years back, my wife and I, we are in, uh, we're in our house, we had big ceilings, so we had these echoes. And we had uh, a glass, uh, glass desks, and we're across from each other. And we have no triple dialer, but we're making calls. And we have each a cell phone, a landline. We have a, um, a magic jack. I know. And we're drilling the phones like one, two, three. And she's she's calling. I'm calling. And it's just rejection. People yelling at us, swearing, um, just not getting any appointments, not knowing how to follow up, and not really being like buying into it. You know what I mean? Like, what am I saying? Why am I saying? And 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 what's the whole meaning? And why isn't this working? So anyway, after a long time doing that and getting zero results. I made this change and this change really changed everything. And it was where I started to understand and I put myself in the shoes of the seller and just started feeling what they were feeling and why they were reacting in the ways that they were. Now, once I did that and once I made that change, okay, sales, I had to practice it, but sales really started becoming a lot easier okay so that got me to the point to where I am now and just having I could get on the phone with anybody okay and have a much higher chance you put a thousand real estate agents in the room I will be in the top five of people converting over and over and over again so uh, number one upswings and downswings when you're talking to someone on the phone, communication is not always what you say. And rarely is it what you say. It's really how you say it. And, and it's a lot in person, but think about this over the phone. When you're on the phone, and you must be on the phone, if you're a real estate agent, you need to be making phone calls because that's our job. Our job is to be on the phone, talking to people, asking them to make purchase decisions or selling decisions. That's just what we do. So you must be doing that if you're not doing that already at a high level. Um, but when you're on the phone with somebody, the communication that you have only goes so far um, because people kind of tone, tune you out, especially if there's a lot of other agents calling them, people tune you out and people are immune to, um, to, telemarketers, okay, which really isn't what you're doing. But in a sense, you're calling somebody who doesn't know you and they don't know, like and trust you. So that's the struggle. And the way you say things changes everything. Upswings and downswings. I use upswings when I want to create doubt. So for example, 
So you're going to relist with that agent, the same agent? See, what I did was, right, I'm pointing up. And this is a physiology thing that uh, Tony Robbins had taught me years back. Physiology in your body and, and what you do makes, you, makes it so much easier to actually do it. Downswing creates authority, okay? So, um, okay, when we meet and you list the home with me, when you list the home with me, Okay, so it's like pointing, it's like putting a big, you know, dot at the end of that sentence. When you list the home with me, okay, so like you're down, authority, okay, assuming the sale. These are, uh, these are those right there, upswings and downswings, those are strategies that you must, must, must practice. Okay, actually, all 11 of these are, but okay, upswings and downswings. I always, I'm so passionate about what I do and what I teach that um, I, you overhear me say a lot, um, okay, the most important thing about this, but I say that a lot because it's all pretty damn important. Okay, number two, repeat, affirm, and redirect. Let me give you, you don't, don't always repeat because sometimes uh, eh, it sounds stupid, you know, like you don't want to always repeat everything, but the affirm and redirect is definitely a must. You affirm because people don't want to be wrong. People want to feel included. They want to feel like they're part of a group and also that they're validated. Okay. Now, if you're married or if you just have a significant other, think about when you validate your significant other. Okay. Or when you get validated by them, like, you know what? I know exactly how you feel. Oh my gosh, like that must have been awful, okay? Because it's, it's empathizing, but also you take it to another level where even if somebody says like, all you effing realtors are the same, well, what are you gonna do? Tell them wrong or ignore it? No, acknowledge it by affirming it. And you can repeat it in that sen sentence too as well, you know? So like, you know what? I hear that a lot. All you effing realtors are the same. Like you are not like, trust me, you're not far off. You know how many people feel like all effing realtors are the same? You're not the only one. And it's frustrating to me too. So you see what I'm doing there? I'm aligning with this person and I'm validating their feelings. This is the affirming part. And then you redirect because once you do that, now they're kind of like, hmm, this dude's all right. What's next? Well, what's next is you taking control of the conversation by redirecting into an open-ended question, which boo, brings me to number three, ask open-ended questions. Now, there's three types of questions, uh, A or B, which can be uh, either or questions. For example, would you prefer to meet tomorrow at six or Friday at seven, you know, or... Um, would you rather sell the home now to a ready, willing, and able buyer at market value, or do you want to keep it on the market for like six months or seven months and then just have to reduce it and have the frustration and then sell it for what you would have sold it today? See, see what I did there. Okay. And it was used in an either or format. You'll find Multiple techniques here, multiple strategies will be able, they're all going to come together. Okay. Do you get it? You get it. Okay. Now that's only the A or B or either or. This is like bonus material right now. Then you have yes or no questions. That's the second time of type of questions. Um, yes or no questions. Mostly you're asking yes questions that are trial closes. And when they say yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, then when you ask for the appointment, or if you ask for the signature, hmm, what have they been saying for the past 30 minutes? Yes, yes, yes. And if you're in front of them, nod your head. Yes, that is exactly what you want, isn't it? Yeah, it is. How did you know? Because I'm just like you. We're just like each other. Do you guys see what I'm doing? This is what you must do with your clients. Okay, now the open-ended questions. 
repeat, affirm, redirect into an open-ended question. And that would be, oh, well, let me tell you what open-ended questions really do. They take controlling the conversation to a whole nother level. When you ask an open-ended question, people have to answer, okay? And they're not, they're going to answer. I mean, like, unless they're a total a-hole, they're going to answer. That's what open-ended questions do. Um, when you do that, someone's now talking, and what can you do? You can listen, which doesn't happen often because it's hard to listen when you're thinking about the next thing to say. But in this case, now you're actually listening to what they're saying and you can then hear what they're saying that applies to the reasons why they're selling, aka motivation, and use that pain and pleasure points to focus the conversation, okay? And I'll show you how all this comes together, but those are open-ended questions. Open-ended question could be, um, how soon did you wanna get up there? Or what does that look like to you? What do you wanna accomplish overall? I mean, there's a, it's any who, what, when, where, why, how question, really, okay? So that's open-ended questions. Number four, mirror and match. Hmm. Mirror and match, we think a lot of when we're in front of people. Yes, definitely in front of people. <laughs> I don't know why I was shaking my head, no. Um, but when you're in front of people, you will, let's say somebody has their legs crossed. Okay, you will cross your legs because you people want to be and they want, people want to be around people like them. If you think about, um, and this may not be the best analogy, but bear with me here, okay? I'm known for bad analogies. Uh, somebody that moves from another country and they move to the U.S., typically, okay, where do they live? Or historically, where have immigrants moved to? They've moved to an area where there's other people like them. Because that's what we want. That's what people want. We want to be around other people like us. This is our peer, our environment, what we're surrounded with, what we are comfortable with. And we want to make people comfortable. And we want to make them comfortable too. So we do this over the phone. And over the phone, mirroring and matching... For example, all you effing realtors are the same, okay? You use, use the same words, use the same, uh, the same voice and tone and anger, okay? And I know you're thinking, why would I use the same anger with them? Number one, if I'm not angry, and number two, if I don't feel like what they're saying, I should be angry about. Well, because you need to align with them. You need to mirror and match them. That's what you need to do. And... You know what you need to do? You, the agent. You need to really buy into that anyway. You need to be passionate about that. So let's take that for, for an example of all you and realtors are the same, okay? Let me ask you as an agent, how do you feel being compared to the quote unquote average agent whose income is less than $30,000 a year, okay? And takes on average throughout the US in different states, 64 hours to get a real estate license. Um, and maybe has burned somebody in the past. How do you feel being compared to somebody else that's average? It's a stereotype, isn't it? And you don't like it. I don't like it either, it sucks, okay? Use that, huh? Use that, okay? So here's the example. You know what? All you effing realtors are the same. It's like, you know what, Mr. Smith? I totally agree. I hear that a lot. And you know what? It infuriates me. Every, you know, so actually, I'll give you the exact words that I would use um, without saying the F word. Okay. Um, you know what? Yeah. All you effing realtors are the same. I hear that a lot. And you know what? That infuriates me too because it's, so frustrating and other people feel the same way as you do okay so i might not even i might not have been fully into that so i'm sorry it's not a real life example um but all you effing realtors are the same you know what i hear that a lot mr smith and i get frustrated about that too let me ask you this 
and then you redirect. So you're buying into the energy. You could use the same words or not. It was hard for me to use the same words in that role play because I was role playing with myself. Okay. Um, but that's what you do. That's what you do. Um, adjust number five, five, just one of these adjust pitch and tonality. Okay. So you see what I did physiology. I went up and down because pitch and tonality, well, excuse me, upswings and downswings fall into the pitch and tonality category, but pitch and tonality just has a lot more to do. There's a lot more involved in pitch and tonality than just upswings and downswings. It's pauses and it's variable rates of speech. Pretty much just think about it this. Don't make it complex. Okay. This is what I want you to do. Think about pitch and tonality as not just, just being yourself, just not talking like a robot, not having to overthink it. I'll tell you what, the people that are the most robotic on the phone and the people that have the lowest success rate and just don't sound good on the phone, they all have one thing in common. One thing. You know what that is? They don't practice. They don't practice. They don't practice. If you practice, this isn't rocket science. It's not. It's really easy. All you need to do is know what to say, know what response, know what skills to use, and know which objections and probably what you're going to hear on the phone. And it's the same thing. If you've invented another objection, then the history of objections, then please let me know. Let me know what that is. It's the same. You just need to practice. So adjust pitch, tonality, say things differently. Just be yourself. If you practice, you'll be able to. That's number five. Number six, I've been doing it the whole time. Speak with, boom, energy and enthusiasm. If you have energy and enthusiasm on the phone, and you have to have it more on the phone than anywhere else. And I know you're thinking, but they can't see me. Exactly. Because they can't see you. That's more the reason why. And I'll explain. When you're in front of somebody face to face, communication is 70% um, what you say, excuse me, 30% what you say and 70% body language, how you say it, all of those things. Okay. When you're on the phone, it's 85%. Okay. What you, uh, how you say things like your fluctuations, like your energy and enthusiasm is 85%. What you say is only 15% because people tone you out. They tune you out. They have heard it all. They're immune. Well, you have to be different. How do you be different with these strategies I'm teaching you energy and enthusiasm? And you don't have to be insane. You just have to use certain strategies that I'm teaching you. Okay. Um, standing up, standing up creates energy and enthusiasm right now. I know it kind of seems a little silly, but I'm just doing a little bounce up and down. You know why? Because my nervous system in my body is being energized when I'm doing that. It's not silly. You know why a lot of people think it's silly? You know why? Come on, lean in. Because nobody does it. Nobody does it. Just because nobody does something does not mean that it's not awesome. Okay? Think about that. Think about the successful entrepreneurs in this world. Think about Henry Ford. Think about Thomas Edison, Walt Disney. Okay? The stuff they did. Nobody else does. Nobody else did. Okay. But it was pretty effing awesome. This is just the way life is. So embrace it. Okay. Feels good, right? Okay. That's speak with energy and enthusiasm. Here's a recap halfway through. Number one, the 11 strategies to sell a ton of homes, uh, use upswings and downswings. Number two is repeat, affirm, redirect. Number three, ask open ended questions. Number four, mirror and match. Number five, adjust pitch and tonality. Did I just do that? Pitch. I don't know why. Pitch and tonality. Number six, speak with woo, woo, 
energy and enthusiasm. Number seven, add value on every call. Add value on every call. Yep, I got a Wonder Woman mug. What's up? Okay, add value on every call. I'll give you some examples. Um, for, for sale by owners, one of, uh, one of my agents had been running into um, this issue of not uh, of not being received well on their follow-up calls trying to get the appointment because you don't always get the appointment on the first call but if they have motivation you keep pushing through they weren't able to get the appointment uh, on the follow-up people the, the the people kept feeling frustrated and they're like well what's going on what's going on so I said run me through the conversation they did they weren't adding value so what is the person on the other end thinking? I'll tell you exactly what they're thinking because that was a rhetorical question. Class, that's a rhetorical question. Sorry, that's just me. Um, so I'll tell you exactly what they're thinking. On the other end of the phone, they want what's in it for me. The classic radio station, WIIFM. What's in it for me? Why is this person bothering me? What are they calling? What do you want? If they even remember you, okay? If they even remember you, most of the time they won't. I know, might be an, uh, a shot at your ego, but don't worry about it, okay? If they, uh, if they don't remember you, they're thinking, well, why is this person calling me? Or if they remember you, um, what, what does this person have? I told, I told, the, I told you last time. You know, like, get off the phone. What do you want? Okay, I told you I could sell it myself. Because you have to lead with value. You have to build what a lot of people call rapport. But it's not really rapport. It's more than that. Uh, rapport only gets you, like, this far. Just a little bit. If you guys ever remember uh, the show Kids in the Hall. the um, What is it called? The cult classic Kids in the Hall from MTV. The guy goes... I'm crushing your head. I am crushing the microphone, the microphone right now. Okay, enough of that. Um, so add value on every call. What's in it for me? Um, they want, they want to have value. So here's a here's an example of value. Um, hey, Mr. Smith, you know what? It's Jay. I was just thinking about you. I noticed that there was a home down the street that had sold. And it just sold yesterday, so I was giving you a call just to give you the, uh, the info on it. Did you have that in front of you? No, I didn't know that it sold. What is it? So knowledge is power, correct? We've heard this before. All of us have. You're giving them information. You're giving them knowledge. You have power, authority, and skills, okay? This is what other people are thinking when you come with value. And now they're thinking, wow. Jay was just thinking about me, and he called me because of that. Hmm, I'm in tune with this person. Tell me more. It just starts a conversation. It opens it up. Okay, enough about adding value on every call. Number eight, be yourself. I know. It sounds so simple. Be yourself. Okay, what are we told from our very first day at kindergarten? Remember this. Think back. I have two kids that just graduated from kindergarten. And by the way, oh my word, I did not think I was going to be, my wife doesn't even know this. Because um, sometimes you share when, uh, when you get emotional as a man. Sometimes you don't. But I can't even tell you, I was crying. Oh my goodness. We watched this little presentation. And um, gosh, it's just so cute. If you have little ones like you, you'll get it. If you don't have little ones yet. Man, it's hard. It's hard, but it's so rewarding. Like those moments, those small moments that, you know, hardly ever come. No, I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, what do they say? First day of kindergarten. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. This is what we're told at a young age. What happens as we get older? We forget. We think we know better. We try to retrain ourselves to protect ourselves, okay? Protect ourselves from the monsters out there, the, 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 the evil, the bad doings, like the things that we've been burned on in the past. 
I know that's kind of getting a lot uh, pretty deep into it. So let's circle back into just be yourself. Now, when my first video, think about this for a video, okay? Because in videos, you have to be yourself or people just know. And like what you're seeing right now, trust me, this is me, okay? Ask anybody, this is me. But here's the good news for you. It was not always this way. It was a train wreck before, okay? And it's still, you know, I'm, I still have very difficult times with this. And everybody does who's on camera. Everybody does. Johnny Carson, I don't know if you know this. Most people don't. So you probably don't know this. But Johnny Carson used to, uh, he, he used to get sick, okay, every time before he went on stage. Every, before every show, he used to get sick. It's difficult being on the camera, being in front of people. But anyway, when I first got on camera um, two and a half years ago, I did my first video. It was a two minute video, okay? Two minutes, 88 takes. And I had on a suit, a three piece suit, excuse me, three piece suit. I was reading from the script for a two minute video and the final result was garbage. It was so bad. Oh my gosh. It's so embarrassing. But we all have to start somewhere. We all have to start somewhere. Okay. So just be yourself, be yourself. And you have to practice being yourself just like these things, just like these strategies to sell more homes. You absolutely can't do it. This is you. It's all you. You just have to practice. All right. So being yourself, that's number eight. Number nine, identify the personality type on the phone. Now, I'm a driver, dominant, there's different words for this, but it's a D, okay? Think about it that way. Then you have your, if you think about the disc, the, uh, the influencer, which people also refer to as expressive. My wife is expressive. I am a driver. There's the steady, which uh, people also refer to as amiable, which is like, just someone who will always tell you yes, uh, and even if uh, even if they don't feel comfortable with something, you know, like it reminds me of, gosh, like like a little old lady, you know, um, like a sweet little old lady, you know, she just wants to be nice, she just wants to be loved. Anyway, that's an amiable. Um, and then there is the uh, S C, the C compliant, or also referred to as analytical. Um, you know, numbers, spreadsheets. Now, why do you need to know these things? Why do you need to know personality types? Because you have to identify what they want, what their needs are, what's in it for them. Because if you can't identify what's in it for them or, or what they want, then the what's in it for them that you think you have isn't going to match. Example, if you have uh, an analytical on the other end of the phone. They want mm, 99 times out of 100 numbers, stats, like concrete evidence. If you don't have that, you're not fulfilling their needs. Same thing in a conversation, me and my wife. Okay. And think about your significant other, your personality types. What, let me ask you this. What's yours and what's your significant others? If you haven't figured that out or thought about it, take the time and do it. Trust me, it will, it'll make you, it'll get you thinking and it'll really help you um, in your relationship as well. So my wife is an expressive and she feels, she feels, and she tells me about a lot of things, which is great. I love that. Okay. But, um, but a lot of times it's not so great for me because like they say, opposites attract, you know, that's, kind of the piece of that, the, the part that I love. Okay. But, um, but a lot of times I don't love it because I'm a driver. I'm to the point. So when I have a question and then I get a 30 minute answer that doesn't even answer the question, oh, I'm just like, Oh my God, I got to get on to the next thing. I got to get on to the next thing. 
So my wife this morning, um, she actually had said to me, I was I wasn't even talking a lot because even if I try to talk a lot about something or to express myself, it's never as long as I think it is. Um, but I was asking her something. It was something that made her feel uncomfortable. And she said, Jay, you know how uh, a lot of times you um, don't like it when I talk a lot? And I was like, oh, shit. Like, she she knows that? I didn't even know. Um, she's like, I feel like that right now. And I was like, okay, I better back off. So anyway, identify the personality type. This way, you can be patient. So for an expressive, I need to be patient and when I have an amiable on the other end of the line, I know that they want to be heard more. Like you have to just react. Uh, okay, so number 10, set expectations. Boom, boom, boom. I love setting expectations. You know why? Nobody does. Nobody does. This is part of our company culture. And it amazes me how... Real estate agents, salespeople, how everybody just doesn't set expectations. Think about being on a phone call and, um, well, actually, okay, better yet. Listing presentation, sign paperwork, okay? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you are going to love working with me. This is what's going to happen next. So, first of all, I pre-frame them saying, you're going to love working with me, okay? Like, it's going to be such an awesome experience. This takes away any doubt that they might have. It also reinforces their decision. See what I'm doing? Um, let me tell you what happens next. First, in the next 24 hours, Marisol is going to call you and she's going to go over X, Y, and Z. Then, boom, boom, boom. So I'm setting the expectation. Setting the expectation of what's going to happen next. People want certainty. They want certainty in life. This will, like, think about it. Don't you want certainty? Even if you are a huge risk taker, you want certain. You want to feel comfort. You want a roof over your head. You want to feel secure. And when you're selling, huh? when you're selling your most valuable asset, you want to feel secure about that decision, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Good grief. Okay, setting expectations. Boom, 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 boom. And your authority in the market. Love it. Number 11, okay, number 11, never, never make somebody feel like they're wrong. So don't argue with somebody. Don't give them an opposing judgment. Now, a lot of times, your clients are going to be wrong. It's okay. Not saying that the customer is always right. What I'm saying is you have to make the customer feel like they're always right, but then be able to take them to the end zone and make the right decision, which is not the decision that they had initially, but allow them to feel like it was their decision. I know you're thinking like, whoa, that's a lot of words. I don't even understand that. Okay, let me break it down for you. Um, somebody says, you know what? Let's say it's a buyer, for example. Um, a buyer says, because we've all worked with buyers like this, I want uh, half an acre. Well, I'll give you an example. A year and a half ago or so, I worked with these customers moving down from New York to Florida. And they said, okay, I want a half acre with a boat, uh, not a boat, with um, that I can put a boat in the driveway. I want it to be in this general area and I want it to be in this specific price range. And I, I was like, wow, yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Let's see if we can find that. Now, let me ask you a question. Because they don't want to feel like they're wrong. Yeah, I can't tell them that they're wrong. Like, ah, no, you're out of your mind, guy. You're not going to get that. I don't know why I did that accent. But you, I can't make them feel like they're wrong. So I said, absolutely. That sounds awesome. And that's incredible. Let me ask you, what is it that, um, what, what, what type of home do you have now? What does that look like? And they might say they have a boat. They might say they don't, okay? Because I don't know if they have a boat or not. Um, I'm trying to find out what's really important to them. But I'm also, like, allowing them to feel good about it instead of feeling bad. Um, this is all across the board with everybody and the way that you talk to them, not just your buyers. Um, I'll kind of speed it up with that example. Um, 
after about showing them, well, I set the expectations with them first. I said, okay, this is what's going to happen next. Now, uh, I'm going to send you um, 10 properties and then you're going to do this and this and look at them online and all that. And then you're going to call me. We're going to talk about your top five. And then I'm going to go and look for another five that also like fit that criteria. And we're going to fine tune that. And then you're going to find, then we're going to have a total of five properties after those things. And you're going to love them. And that was setting expectations. And that's what ended up happening. Okay. Here's what happened. They bought in a gated community. It wasn't half an acre. It was, I don't know, like 0.2 acres. Um, it was a gated community that didn't allow a pool and it was within their price range and within the location. So price range and location were most important to them. After asking them all those other questions, the boat wasn't that important because they didn't have a boat. They were thinking, well, maybe we'll get a boat. That'd be kind of cool. So at the end, when I asked them, what did you love about the experience? Because you always have to, you know, you want to know what you did well and what you didn't do well. They said, you know what, Jay, you knew what we wanted before we even knew. And you helped us get there without us even knowing that you did. And I was like, that is a beautiful way of putting it. And that's what you should and will be doing with your clients. If you do these things and you follow these 11 strategies that I used to sell ASUX home last year, uh, use up swings and down swings. Number one, number two, repeat, affirm, redirect. Number three, ask open-ended questions. Number four, mirror and match. Number five, adjust pitch and tonality. Number six, speak with energy and enthusiasm. Number seven, uh, add value on every call. Number eight, be yourself. Number nine, Identify personality type. Number 10, set expectations. Number 11, never make people feel like they're wrong. Okay? And here's a bonus for you. If you're watching till the end, you get a bonus. Um, who's a lucky winner? You all are. Um, affirming words that you can use on the phone when you're doing repeat, affirm, and redirect. Um, affirming words is great, awesome, fantastic, wow, good for you, incredible. Those words are affirming words that you can use that will then redirect, okay? Follow these things, you guys, sell more homes. If you love this video, these other videos, if you don't love it, don't tell anybody about it, okay? Just don't come back to this YouTube channel. But if you do, if you do love these videos, subscribe below, like it, comment it, all that good stuff. And you know what? Do me a solid. Share it with other people that will benefit from it too. All right. See you guys later and go sell. Bye.